हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व टू कोडिंग क्वेश्चन विच वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम टूडेज इन फी टी क्यू एग्जाम दीज आर फ्रॉम जावा सेक्शन बट इट रियली डजेंट मैटर वॉट द प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज इज बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन द लॉजिक ऑफ द क्वेश्चन सो दिस इज अर सेकेंड क्वेश्चन आई एम नॉट रीडिंग द क्वेश्चन यू कैन जस्ट यू कैन जस्ट पॉज एंड रीड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट बिफोर मूविंग फर्दर so in this question we are supposed to find the size of largest sub matrix that only contain ones and if the size comes out to be one or lesser return minus 1 now let's understand it with the input given so let's see let's say this is a uh, let's say this is our input right so this is a matrix that contains only ones and zeros so let's see this one so this one can only make a sub matrix sub matrix with with its adjacent ones if these are also one but in this case this one cannot extend itself to uh, to its adjacent uh, elements right so now this one will form a sub matrix alone and the size will be one again for this this can also uh, make a sub matrix of size one since we are dealing with the maximum uh, with the largest sub matrix so now we'll have to take the maximum of these two the maximum will be 1 and if the size comes out to be 1 or lesser we'll have to return minus 1 or we have to print minus 1 so this is our first case now coming to the second uh, coming to the second input so this is our second input now let's try to let's try to form the sub matrices so the first one can be this and the size will be 2 cross 4 that is 8 another one can be this and the size will be 4 cross 2 that is 8 one can be this and the size will be 3 cross 3 that is 9 now since we are dealing with the largest sub matrix we'll have to take the maximum of all so the maximum will be 9 so 9 will be the maximum largest sub matrix that will only contain ones so if we will look at the problem look at this problem closely this is to find the maximum area that contains only ones so this is a maximum area in the matrix that contains all ones so we have solved the maximum area of the histogram problem you can go to the playlist and in the stack area, in the stack playlist you can find the uh, find the video for maximum you can find the video for maximum area of histogram now let's understand how both these both problems are same this one and the maximum area of the histogram so let's consider so let's consider each row as a base now if this is a base this will this will represent the height of the bar in the histogram so since all are one so the histogram will something look like this now the height of each bar is one so the maximum area that can form using this histogram is this one is the height and since it involve four columns so we'll multiply it by 4 so 4 is the maximum area right now let's say we are considering second row as a base now if second row is considered as a base we'll ha we'll have bars of height 2 height 2 2 2 2 right 1 plus 1 is 2 so height of each bar will be 2 right so now in this case the maximum area will be this one so this can be calculated using height and this so 2 cross 4 will be 8 now let's say we are considering uh, we are considering third third row as a base so let's see if we are considering third row as a base that means this is a base so in this case the histogram will look like uh, will something look like this 3 3 3 and since this is a zero so this will be zero right so for this histogram the maximum closing area will be this and this can be calculated using 3 cross 3 that is 9 similarly if, if we are considering base to this fourth row if we are considering base to this fourth row so for this column this will be 0 for this it will be 4 and for this one it will be 4 and for the last column it will be 1 so the maximum area that can be that is enclosed by this histogram is this this one so this can be calculated using 4 cross 2 that is 8 now we have 
we have found area uh, area uh, using by considering each row as a base so now we finally we have will have to take the maximum of maximum area returned by each row so the maximum will be 9 in this case right now we'll see how we'll modify this matrix we'll modify this matrix such that it will work perfectly fine with the maximum area of the histogram function so we are considering so we are passing each row to the maximum area histogram since the maximum area histogram function takes array and the size right so we'll have to pass an array and the size and this array is basically holds the heights of bar in the histogram so now we'll see how we can convert this above matrix so for first row if first row is a base the height of each the height of each bar is one how how did we calculate this because each element is one let's say if this this element is zero so we'll update the height of bar with zero but in this case all the elements are one so we'll update it by one now when we'll come to the second row if we are considering second row as a base we'll have we have two ones first one is this and second one is this so first of all we will check whether the original whether the input matrix has one at this index if yes we'll update it by adding this one and this one so we'll update it by two similarly we'll check for this one if this is one we'll update it by this plus one two similarly we have come to this particular index now again we will go to the original matrix and we'll check whether this 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 value is one if this value is one we'll update it by adding this value and the particular value which is present at the index so this is two similarly for this one this is two now coming to this if this is one again we have to add this value and the value at this particular index so three three and three and if the value is zero at the origin in the original matrix we'll simply give it zero so here it is zero we'll simply give it zero here it is one so we'll add this one to this three four similarly we'll add this if this is one we'll add this one to this three that is four and if this is one we'll add this one to this zero that is one so this is how we have formed a, we have formed a new matrix from the given input matrix and now we can pass each row as an input to the maximum histogram function and the maximum histogram function will return the corresponding area for each row and then finally we'll have to take the maximum of all the values so now let's see its code so this is the class for maximum area histogram these are two functions first one is next smaller element to the left this one is the next smaller element to the left and this one is the next smaller element to the right if you are not aware of these two functions you can uh, watch the video or in the stack playlist they both are present there and this is the maximum area histogram which is taking an array and the size of the array so now coming to this we have taken the input we have taken an input m and now against each value let's say m is 4 so for all the all the subsequent four rows we'll have a string separated by comma right so now we'll convert this into the into the 2d matrix like this and then finally we'll have to make that temporary matrix which will contain the height of each bar while considering each row as as a base so if there is, if this is a first row we'll simply update it with the values of array if this is not the first row and the array original array has the value one so we'll update it with the value at at that particular index and the previous and the value of previous row at that uh, very column right and if it is zero we'll simply update it with zero then finally we'll pass each and every row to this to this maximum area histogram function and then finally by taking maximum of all the values we can print the value and if the answer is lesser or one we can update the answer by minus one so this is a code 
Python code will be very similar. You can go through the maximum area histogram uh, video for Python uh, for the code, and there is a link in the description for Python code. You can go through and you can make this. Uh, you can make this uh, 2D array and then you can pass each row as an input to the maximum area histogram function. So guys, there might be some other approach for solving this problem. But since we had to record this video today itself, we, come, we came up with this approach. And also there is one similar problem in which we are supposed to find the largest squared submatrix that contains only ones. And that can be solved using dynamic programming. So you can go through that problem also. So... I hope both the questions are clear and this was all about the all about today's video. I wish you best of luck to everyone out there having their exam. Thank you. Thank you.